Hey everybody, it's Alex Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. And today I want to talk to you guys about something that I've honestly seen causing rifts in our hobby. And I, I don't like seeing that. And that is, this is one symptom, one example of the kind of rifts that develop in the aquarium hobby. But that is the debate of how to keep fish, what filtration system to use. And there's enough differences between sponge filters and uh, canister filters and hang off the back filters to make anybody scratch their head, especially when they're new to the hobby. So if you're new, please don't, don't feel bad if you get lost a little bit in any of this terminology. And if you're interested, I'll have links down below in the description where you guys can uh, nerd out and, and learn more about that. But I'm going to keep it to a very surface level in this, and I'm going to talk about the issue at hand, which is last night, uh, a couple things transpired, and on Corey of Aquarium Co-op Stream, who has 800,000 subscribers, which, congrats, that's great, you build a huge empire in the hobby, and uh, I know a lot of people get a lot out of that, so congratulations to him and to the community over there. But something came up on his channel, which is... Uh, somebody asked about anoxic filtration, and they seemed to bring it up as a joke. And if you don't know what anoxic filtration is, I'm going to give you a real basic overview. So I don't want a bunch of comments that are saying, you don't get it, there's this exception and that exception. I do, I've read a lot about it, I, I get it. But essentially, there's a few ways to do it, but one of the popular ways is a biosinosis basket, um, or a BCB uh, basket, as it's sometimes called if you see it online in forums. And that is basically a basket with laterite, or something that attracts uh, negatively charged particles. And in the case of our aquariums, ammonia is a negatively charged particle. So it gets pulled into that, and it bonds with that, and then you put a plant or something in there, or you can just change it out and whatnot. Uh, there's other ways to handle it too. And that then sucks the ammonia out of the, the water column because ammonia is harmful to fish. Now, traditionally in the hobby, what we've understood since the 1900s is that there is a cycle. Your tank gets cycled and it's done by uh, nitrosomas and nitrobacter, which are nitrogen uh, processing, sorry car, nitrogen processing uh, bacteria species. And they find a surface area in your aquarium. The, the more surface area, the bigger the colony you can have. Water runs over it, needs to have oxygen in it, so it needs to be aerobic, not like jazzercising, but aerobic. And that means it has oxygen. So then it can take the ammonia, turn it into nitrites, turn that nitrites, the next type of, of bacteria in our tanks, then turns the nitrites into nitrates. So we may all know that story, or if you're brand new, maybe you don't, but that's okay. So the argument that happened basically stemmed on, they said, well, what about Dr. Novak's idea of the anoxic filtration? And let me just say this first, anoxic filtration, not a new idea. Earth has been doing it for billions of years. And also the waste industry, the waste treatment plants have had knowledge of this for almost 100 years now. The last 70 years, really, I mean, there's been papers published. Anoxic filtration, not new. Uh, also, slow-moving plenums versus uh, surface agitation, how to get oxygen into water, CO2 out of water, ammonia out of water, nitrate, all those things have been explored pretty heavily throughout chemistry and physics and other fields. So there's a lot of ways to do it. And, you know, just like there's a lot of ways to keep an aquarium, different people prefer different things. But in the chat, what happened was somebody brought that up and he shot it down by saying, basically, I have no interest in that. And a lot of times lately, I've been seeing a lot of people dismiss it. And I can understand on a surface level why people dismiss this whole thing or why they dismiss the fact that this movement of keeping anoxic tanks um, with B BCB baskets or with undergravel plenums, why it's almost become like a conspiracy theory of there's this big fish company that controls everything 
and they don't want us to know that there's an easier way. But if you unpack that a little bit, it's not really an easier way, it's just a different way. And if you look into it further, there's a whole bunch of different ways. You can do things, you don't even need to cycle your tank. I, I'm not saying this as, please try this out. You don't need to cycle your tank. You can just put fresh water in every day. The markets in Asia do this all the time. They, they cram thousands of fish into little tanks and they just change the water. They don't worry about the ammonia. But if you have a planted tank and you wanna keep it stable and you wanna keep it balanced, you do need to feed those plants. So you need to find a way for them to get nitrogen or nitrates specifically uh, and nitrites. Well, it turns out that's what we've thought for a long time. Ammonia bad because it hurts fish. Nitrites, not good either. That's still harmful to fish, it hurts them. But nitrates, they're okay, we can have some and fish aren't as responsive to that in a negative way. So that's okay, we, we want that because then that feeds our plants. Well, it turns out <clears throat> plants actually like ammonia more than they like nitrates or nitrites. And it's easier on their metabolism and the amount of energy they spend to grow and to live if they process low amounts, high amounts can still burn them and cause problems. Everything in moderation of ammonia. Now, this means that a sequestration system like a BCB basket or a deep substrate, that there's these different methodologies that people have played with and been trying to biomimic life out in the organic world, nature, that, that work. And there's a lot of different methods. There's probably a bunch I haven't heard of. There's probably a bunch you haven't heard of. I want to say, first and foremost, I am not an expert on this. I would say I'm well-versed to the point where I understand it mostly on most of these facets. But my channel here, I want to say first and foremost, because I'm going to be talking about the role of cult of personality, ego, and trends or popularity, and, and what that aspect is, is doing to the hobby and to the specifically online community right now within our hobby that I don't like, and that's what I want to address. It's not the most pleasant truth to look at, but it is going on, and it's going on as a larger thing in our country as a whole. All There's all these things that divide people, but let me say this. First of all, I'm no expert on these things. I'm a jack of all trades, an expert of none, and I find them interesting, and if you know about them, I'd love to learn more. You know, if you've got resources, I'd like to learn more, especially about the things that don't get talked about. That's what I want to put on my channel, is the stuff that we haven't learned about yet, the stuff that's not easily accessible. That's what I'm fascinated by. Different ways to do the same thing, with the same effect, out outcome in the end, differently. But I would say everybody has an agenda, and what happened was Dr. Novak responded and said, Corey is basically only concerned about money. And he does this because he doesn't want people making their own filtration at home and him missing out on money. And I can say that there are many fish uh, companies and many products in general where they do things like a light bulb that doesn't last 100 years, even though it could. That's greedy. It's, it's for the sake of the economy, for the, the profits that, that they do that. The same thing I agree with filtration in a lot of pre-bought filtration or kits at big box stores. But honestly, I don't see a ton of that in what Corey's doing at Aquarium Co-op. I do agree that he's motivated by money. He said that himself and uh, that he's a business guy. His channel is there to build his brand and get people into the hobby, get them the basics they need so that it can help fuel the hobby and the company. And it doesn't really matter what his agenda is at the end of the day because nothing's stopping you from going out and doing these things. Likewise, I would say that if you want to level a claim of any of the big YouTubers as being greedy or, or um, having an agenda with a company or whatnot, you can also look at people who claim that they have a system and that's the only thing they profess, like Dr. Novak, there's problems there too. I mean, everybody wants a legacy and it's a very real factor when people go speak for money or they do lectures 
and there's a social status and in an in-group and an out-group within a hobby, you want to be wanted. You want to be important. And, you know, honestly, what's bummer about this is that some of the same motivations that I think can cause people that are in the limelight, myself included, not that I have a huge limelight, but, you know, you feel differently when thousands of people are watching and listening. And that can change your agenda. And definitely money can, too. But the world is not one giant conspiracy. You know, if Corey wanted to benefit from this, he could package up laterite and a little box and all the things that you would want and need for anoxic filtration. And he could sell that. And he could be the only guy in the hobby that's really doing that at a level that could push it out mass to the, to the masses. So what's the real reason why we haven't adopted this? It's scary. It's new. It's new information you have to master. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is why. So there may be a better system. There may be a better way to do things. Electric cars have existed for 50 years, right? But they're only now becoming more popular again. There, there, there isn't a necessary, there isn't a, a cause that is causing people to say, man, I'm losing a lot of fish or this or that, uh, that has made them say, I need to try something different. And to a lot of people, the hobby has enough facets and ins and outs and little areas you can focus on on its own that it gets very complicated when you start telling people that there's a whole new way to do things. The way you thought your tank worked, once you understand the nitrogen cycle, for instance, there are about a thousand things that could go wrong or throw it off or do things with it. The same is true of any system. I don't care how many... Uh, advantages someone says a system has and the bottom line is it the the industry is tailored towards aerobic not jazzercising again but uh aerobic as in oxygenated filtration with nitrosoma and nitrobacter as the two big actors in that you can even buy them in bottles cycle your tank in a day it's the same as basically taking filter media from an aquarium just like people used to do in the olden days and putting it in your aquarium uh, after borrowing it from one of your other aquariums or a friend's aquarium and you filter the tank so yet there's a pushback on that stuff the bacteria in a bottle wasn't either believed or wasn't embraced for a really long time in the hobby i mean there's probably a decade of people being very skeptical about it and um you know that's people being scared of what they don't know or maybe being cautious rightfully so of what they don't know until they understand it and these are complex things to wrap our head around but the bummer to me is that i see so often people either arguing or saying they know the best way um you know another another example would be how you do things is do you keep a, a fish tank like um Dean, the fish keeper that's on Aquarium Co-op frequently, he's in my local club. I've seen his fish room. It's, it's beautiful. It's very methodically uh, planned and very efficient. The, the tanks are bare. There's no plants in his fry hatching facility. Whereas my tanks, Lucas Bretts, uh, other people, they, we have as much mulm and leaves and plants and little critters and bugs and zigzaggy, uh, you know, insects as we can get in our ecosystem because we're emulating uh, nature. But I get if you want a sterile setup. It doesn't mean one way is wrong. There are so many ways to get into this hobby. There's so many different things to try in this hobby. You can even not have a filter at all. Now, you're walking on kind of a tightrope there and you need to really understand your system and your plants and your light and all the different variations there uh, and, and variables that can go into that, but it doesn't make it wrong. It just may mean that it's more difficult for someone who doesn't know the back story of information. It's more difficult and they can't go to the store and buy product A, B, and C for it. Now, I will admit, you know, a lot of the cartridges you buy at the store that are A, B, and C, like I'm saying, are ways to get you to spend more money, just like that light bulb that, that lasted you know, a hundred and some years is still burning. Yet our light bulbs go out in a few months or years, depending on what you buy. So there are those elements in the hobby where you can save money and people really are just kind of getting um, screwed over on what it is they're doing. But as a whole, 
I want to say that in this debate, I don't think that's where it's coming from. I don't think there's a big industry keeping that down. I mean, did you guys know that there are yeasts in low pH water that handle ammonia also? that then create CO2 and then they sequester it with sulfur and iron and other compounds. And there's a whole ecosystem. There's also deep substrates where you sequester the ammonia deep down under everything and you have a cap and it doesn't come out. And your roots, they punch through that cap. Maybe everybody could start putting clay as a cap that's thick and, you know, waterproof. And you have a little barrier and you put each plant through the barrier. That wouldn't be wrong either, you know? There'd be downfalls to it. There'd be pluses to it also. But what I don't like is that this seems to be really tearing apart the community feeling. And I know on my channel, I've worked really hard to encourage us, one, not to be afraid of what we don't know, not to be afraid of what's new and different, hear it out. If there's merit to it, if there's peer-reviewed information or other experts that are saying, yeah, this guy has a point, this is working, Look into it. See what the evidence is. Learn to differentiate these things yourself. That is why I wanted to make my channel the way it is. That's what we do. We explore new things. We look at the different sides of things. And whether or not there's some other ulterior motive and whatnot, you know, of wanting to be the person who's known for this or wanting to make money, that shouldn't affect your hobby. You can keep fish lots of different ways. Should there be more ways? Sure, maybe you should be the person to go out and do it if you feel that way. You know, manufacture that product. But at the end of the day, there is no one right way. There is what works for you. There is what's interesting, what you want to experiment with. There's pros and cons to everything. And I want the same community, you know, that gets built around these ideas or clicks or thoughts or ways to do things, saltwater, freshwater, um, big fish, monster fish, nano fish, the same uh, things that get built up this way. I want people to come together about finding out new things, bringing light into the darkness. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> but there's so much information out there and we're just scratching the surface of it. And uh, if you want to look a little bit deeper get beyond that. I mean, politics, emotions, people plays a role in these innovations and inventions and the credibility of things. But I'm just here to tell you, I've looked into a lot of these things. Those two are big time both valid, uh, whether you want to do anaerobic, anoxic, anaerobic, aerobic, uh, whether, you know, did you know that pH uh, matters so much to ammonia that you won't have ammonia in the water, ammonium, under 6.4 so um it depend it depends on a lot of other things but i'm just saying there's so much that we don't talk about that we don't learn as the main story that's handed out as the easy to understand pamphlet and it could have been a different easy pamphlet but that's not the way things shook out and if it does end up being good it'll evolve and people will do it and they'll learn it and it will become the new norm. Just like under gravel filters and plenums were huge in the 50s and 60s. And when people changed over in the 90s, 80s, 90s, 2000s to the hang off the back filter, canister filters, CO2, uh, LED lights instead of, uh, you know, the T5 lights and all that kind of stuff. There's always pushback when change happens, when something new and not understood is going on. But we don't need to attack each other over it and... I think most people in this hobby, their motivations are, are good. Even if they're going to make some money along the way, even if they're going to get some clout or renowned or a legacy, you know, that just drives them a lot of times to work harder. It's just, unless you've seen deceitful practices, that's where I would worry. And that's where we need the community to work together and say, that's not right. You know, what's going on there is not right. And so if you feel this way, and you're not a part of my community, but you're hearing this and this registers with you, and you want to take deep dives into learning this stuff, consider joining the community here. I feel like we have an incredible community for a channel of this size. We have so many gifted and intelligent people that specialize in all sorts of different parts of this hobby. And I want to continue to foster that. And the truth is, that arguing over this and anoxic this or aerobic that, anaerobic this, 
it can actually threaten how we get along as a hobby and hurt people's feelings and emotions and uh, push them away from learning new things, from trying new things. And that's why, you know, I think that we need to embrace all these things, take a look at them in the light of day with other experts chiming in. So the more experts we have, the better, uh, you know, to get their opinions on these models of doing things. So if you agree with that, I do appreciate it if you click the like button because it helps this message travel, this video travel. And also, you know, I just, uh, I want to thank you for spending the time here to hear me out on this. And uh, if you made it this far, I would say you may really enjoy some of the other deep dives I go into where we do kind of pick apart these things that are not well known to the hobby yet, or they're known to another discipline, but they can be applied to the hobby. So thank you for your time and watching. I hope you have a great day and uh, subscribe if you want to see the next video and like if you want to spread the message. If it didn't register with you, you wasted a lot of time hanging out here with me. So uh, get out of here. Go enjoy your life. And uh, to the rest of you, I'll see you next time on The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Bye, guys.